This is a virtual presentation for the 8th International Conference on Environmental, Cultural, Economic and Social Sustainability that's taking place at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada between the 10th and the 12th of January 2012. My name is Omar Hassawi and I'm a recent graduate from the Master of Architecture program at the University of Arizona under the supervision of Program Director Professor Nader Chalfon. The title of this presentation is Designing Thermally Comfortable Outdoor Spaces for Mosques in Hot Arid Regions. And for the purpose of this research, the outdoor space of an existing mosque located in Phoenix, Arizona was selected to conduct the study. Taking a look at the historical development of the mosque building type, it can be noticed that early built mosques followed the layout of the Prophet's house in Medina, where the outdoor space occupied approximately 85% of the total land area, with no treatment to protect it from the harsh environmental conditions in the region. These early built mosques had an outdoor space to total land area ratio that ranged between 40 and 95%. Some of the newly built mosques still follow the similar layout, with minimum or even no treatment to the outdoor space, making it difficult to utilize these areas, and if utilized, would cause thermal stress to those who use them. It's also important to note that the highest energy consumer and carbon dioxide emitter by sector in the United States are buildings. They consume approximately half of the energy produced and are responsible for 47% of the total carbon dioxide emitted. Globally, these numbers are even larger. So utilizing outdoor spaces will reduce the use of the indoor spaces, thus reduce the impact of the building sector in general and this building type in specific on our natural environment. Other important facts to keep in mind are mosques are characterized with an intermittent occupancy schedule as they are mainly occupied for the five daily prayers and the weekly Friday noon prayer and that Muslims represent approximately 25% of the total world population and they are the fastest growing among the five largest religions. In the United States, a tremendous growth has been witnessed in mosque attendance by Muslims between 1994 and 2000 and these numbers have raised during the past years as well. So consequently, new places of worship are required. So the goal of this research is to improve and achieve thermal comfort levels in an outdoor space of a selected mosque in Phoenix through design and testing of selective passive environmental control strategies adequate for hot arid regions. If adequate levels of thermal comfort can be achieved outdoors throughout the year, then indoor spaces could be transformed to outdoor spaces thus conserving energy. As Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, said, all the world is a masjid. I now move on and explain the methodology used to conduct this research where four major steps were followed. I first select a site and identify the potential passive strategies adequate for the region the location is part of using the psychrometric chart. After that I simulate the current thermal conditions on site using the computer simulation software named Outdoor developed by Professor Nader Chalfon at the University of Arizona. The results obtained from this software are used to identify the daily predicted mean vote at each simulation location. A design is then developed that incorporates the potential passive strategies identified earlier and attempts to improve the thermal conditions on site. I then conduct a simulation that incorporates the design on the site using the same computer software and a graph is generated that compares between the existing daily predicted mean vote and the modified daily predicted mean vote. An iterative process of testing, modifying and retesting was used to improve the design and reach the optimum thermal conditions that could be achieved on site. So the outdoor space selected was that of an existing mosque located in Phoenix, Arizona. The Sahan, which is another name to an outdoor area attached to a mosque, had an area of uh, approximately 3,000 square feet and the dimensions of 54 by 54 feet. This is an image looking towards the outdoor space. As we can see, it's completely exposed to direct solar radiation, with no treatment at all. After plotting the climate data of the region onto a psychrometric chart that has the potential passive strategies that help expand the comfort zone identified on it, it was noticed that the potential strategies for the summertime were shade and evaporative cooling, and for winter time was passive solar heating. The existing thermal conditions were simulated using the computer software named Outdoor at five critical locations on the site. The date of June 17 was the summer day selected to conduct in this study. 
This software calculates the effective temperature that takes into account the impact of the surrounding radiative fields on our bodies. But in order to account for these radiative fields, fisheye images at each simulation location for each one of the five daily prayers had to be taken. And these images had to be superimposed on a polar grid in order to calculate the percentage of exposure of our bodies at that simulation location to those surrounding radiative fields. So the results from the software were used to identify the daily thermal conditions at each simulation location through two graphs. One that plots the daily predicted mean vote and the other that compares between the actual effective temperature and the dry bulb temperature measured by a thermometer. It was noticed that during the afternoon prayers, the actual effective temperature was approximately 115 degrees, whereas the dry bulb temperature was 99 degrees. A graph that overlays the daily predicted mean votes of all the simulation locations was then generated, and it was noticed that thermal conditions during the morning, noon, and afternoon prayers needed significant modification, whereas that during the sunset and nighttime prayers needed minimum modification. Moving on to the design, in order to incorporate evaporative cooling in the design strategy, cool towers were utilized. These towers used cellulose pads wetted by water on the top portion of the tower shaft. As hot air passes through these wetted pads, the moisture content in that air increases, thus the weight of this air increases and drops by gravity through the tower shaft and into the space being cooled underneath. Several examples that utilize this design strategy can be found at the Environmental Research Lab Cool Tower in Tucson, Arizona and the Mumra Environmental Roda in Saudi Arabia. In order to calculate the size of these cool towers, the cooling load had to be identified. This was calculated by multiplying the footprint of the Sahan by the height of 4 feet, which is enough to cover the head of a worshipper while performing his prayers in the seated position. Also, the openings on the east side of the Sahan had to be closed in order to maintain the cool air in the space for a longer period of time. Several iterations were developed on the size and the number of these cool towers using the CoolT software generated at the Environmental Research Lab at the University of Arizona. The option that utilizes four cool towers distributed evenly in the space was the one selected for this design as it provides better air distribution, more locations with low temperatures, and it allows for a shading strategy to be integrated onto each one of the tower shafts. The structure of this tower was made out of aluminum, and the enclosure was defined by a Teflon-coated woven fiberglass fabric. In order for the shading strategy to provide passive solar heating during winter times, and to protect from direct solar radiation during summer times, a retractable shading device had to be developed. Such examples can be found at the Muslim Sustainable City Plaza in Abu Dhabi and the Sahan of the Prophet's Mosque in Medina, Saudi Arabia. The shading device on each cool tower was divided into four equal segments that operate independent from one another. The material used to build these shading devices was proposed to be Teflon coated woven fiberglass fabric similar to that used to enclose the tower shaft. Several iterations were developed on the operation of the fabric structure from a partially porous flat surface in the schematic design to a completely retractable surface onto the tower shaft faces in the final design. Here is an image of the physical model developed to study the operation of the shading device. As we can see, the operation of one segment of the shading structure from its completely deployable to its completely retractable position. Following our series of renderings, looking towards the shading devices as they transform from their fully deployed position to a partially deployed position and ending with the fully collapsed position onto the tower faces. In order to evaluate the performance of the proposed design, a thermal simulation that incorporates the tower structure and shading device in the space had to be conducted and the procedure message early in the study for the simulation had to be followed. The effect of the shading on the thermal conditions was simulated at the beginning. Results showed a significant improvement on the thermal conditions especially during the noon and afternoon prayers as there was a significant drop in the effective temperature 
during the afternoon prayer from 115 to 82 and in the predicted mean vote during the same prayer time from intolerable heat to warm. To evaluate the effect of evaporative cooling in addition to shade on the thermal conditions at the different simulation locations, our exposure to the cool air coming out of the towers had to be identified in plan view. So for example, at the center of the Sahan, our exposure to the cool air coming out of the towers was approximately 18%, whereas our exposure to the ambient conditions surrounding us was approximately 82%. This showed an improvement, but to the less extent, on the thermal conditions in the space. During the afternoon prayers, the effective temperature dropped from 82 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, and the predicted mean vote dropped from warm to neutral. Taking a look at the combined set of results, it can be noticed that thermal conditions developed significantly from the existing to applying shade and then to adding evaporative cooling in addition to shades to the space. I end this presentation with a set of conclusions I've came up with, starting off with the importance of having an operation schedule that identifies when the proposed environmental control strategies should be utilized throughout the day, and when the space should be exposed to the ambient conditions, as shown in the diagram below. It's important to note that 75% of the improvement in thermal conditions was caused by the convertible shading device and that the other 25 was caused by evaporative cooling via cool towers in addition to the shading strategy, which was less than expected. Finally, the modularity of the proposal and its minimum interference with horizontal circulation creates a versatile design that could be applied in outdoor spaces other than those related to mosques. I'd like to thank you for listening and would welcome any questions or suggestions about this research and presentation on the email address listed above. Thank you again.